Hello everybody, Catboy Vaughn here. Do another review. It well, it's time to start a new segment. Yay! Uh let's see, slight backstory with this one. Um well, if you've seen my after video of the Charlotte Minicon, you already know what it's going to be. <laughs> but, I asked some people on DeviantArt through one of the polls, uh, what should I review next? And, by demand, uh, I got this one. So let's do it. Today we'll be talking about the Masters of the Universe Classics figure of Orko, plus a little extra thing, which we'll get to when we open it. In truth, I never planned to get any of the, well, five inch scale stuff made by Maddie. But, with a previous purchase I made, uh, that'll come in later, um, so I decided to saw this at the convention, Bought it and yeah, we'll get to it when we open it up. Uh, first off, the packaging. It's very nice and stuff. Very good. Masters of the Universe Classics. Probably, probably there's a reason for that. Like the Masters of the Universe movie. Why it didn't have the word he man on it. But yeah, this is made by Maddie. Uh, looks pretty cool. Little side note. Another side note is that Orko is my favorite character from He-Man: Masters of the Universe. Yeah, Orko is my favorite character. And some of you know the older He-Man series, which the classics line is more based around. Un Unlike that, I'm more of a fan of the 2005 version of He-Man and the He-Man and the Masters of the Universe. Let me rephrase that: He-Man and the Masters of the Universe. And I I have it on DVD. I have two of the DVDs. No, if you see these things, buy them. Five bucks each. It's like ten episodes. It's like ten episodes each. Five bucks. 50 cent per episode. That not including tax though. It's pretty cool. Anyway, give me a moment to open this up and we'll start talking. See you in a second. Alright, just got everything out of the packaging. Alright, let's start with, well, Orco. Orco is at the little file card, really long one, will explain Orko a little better than I can. Because Orko is a court magician, is the court magician of Eternia, where the entire story of He-Man and the Masters of the Universe takes place. Uh, the Orko figure is pretty simple. Um, the head can rotate a full 360, and the scarf can move a full 360. Uh, arms can go about this far up, depending on where the hat is. Bend up and down. Can turn a full 360, but slightly hindered because of where the hat's positioned. The elbow bends in and out, turns a full 360 sideways. And the hand turns a full 360. Um, there's nothing under him. Nothing at all. So, yeah. Uh, we're gonna wait for accessories in a moment to read Orko's backstory. And there's a little tiny picture of Orko. Alright, let's read it, shall we? Orko, heroic court magician. Real name. Orco copyright information. After the rise of the Horde Empire, evil again outweighed the forces of good in the four in the five dimensions. 
So, in every generation, a cosmic warrior was recruited by the overlords of Tela to fight against evil. Each was given the Sword of He, a weapon infused with the power of the universe. They were also assigned a Trollin guide to watch over them and advise them in their quests. On the planet Eternia, after five centuries of being split in two, the Telson powers Trell Trollin I think that's actually how pronounced. Power Sword was at last rejoined and bequested to an to the heir of worthy of its power, Prince Adam of the royal household. Orko, a member of the of the Trollin Magic Elite, was assigned to watch over Adam. Though he was a powerful mage on Trollin, Pola, the hidden magical properties of Eternia turned his magic into little more than entertaining tricks, which he used to entertain his friends and remains undercover. Wow, I never knew that, actually. From, from, from what I remember in the cartoon, is that, or, that Orko was just silly. In Eternia, um, it was revealed in the show that he was from somewhere else. But, whatever. It's Orko! Yay! Um, Orko's accessories are... Um, his magic wand. Which fits in his... Right hand. A book, which I can't seem to fit in his right hand. But it should. And this thing. The little warp thing. Um, it's supposed to keep Orko balanced. Yeah, it slightly works, I guess. Just put it on my computer. Um, see? Slightly balanced, but that was... I, I have shaking hands. Oh, there's more accessories than just that. Um, but first, I think there's something going on. Let me check. I have the power! Oh, golly. He has to fight Skeletor. Hmm? <clears throat> Prince Adam. Uh, your father, King Randall, wishes to see you in the main chambers. He must talk to you about your weapons practice for the day. Oh, golly! But, but Adam turned to He-Man! Uh, uh, gotta do something, gotta do something. I got it! Hosho kasi kuta! Hi, people of Eternia. I am Prince Adam. And not Orko. Definitely not Orko. Is Orko small and tiny and uses magic? I'm Prince Adam. Prince of Eternia. Yeah. Uh, gotta go. Yeah, um, this is a weird accessory. Um, besides the Orko figure, you get a, a figure of Prince Adam. A.K.A. He-Man. Main character. Okay. Um, I don't get this, but whatever. Um, to my knowledge, there was a single version of him released, but that was cancelled, so they put it up with the Orko figure. 
to the fact that Orgo um, is not much work, you know, not much with him. So they decided to throw in a full body figure of Prince Adam. Um, something to slight note, there's no information uh, for Prince Adam, mostly the fact that he's also He-Man, so I guess there wouldn't be any information. Um, I did that little skit, mostly the fact that, in truth, I don't know why they packed Prince Adam with him. Uh, they were always, they're always, they're good friends, but I don't see why they would be put in the same set. I just think from the original 80s show that Orko turned into Prince Adam a few times. Probably another reason why most people didn't see that Prince Adam was actually He-Man, even though they are extremely similarly built. At least the 2005 series addressed that by making Adam really, really skinny and short, and making He-Man really, really tall and strong and muscular. Anyway, let's get to articulation for Adam, Prince Adam. Uh, his head rotates a full 360, goes up and down. His arms go about this far up, then turn a full 360. The bicep turns a full 360. Still don't get that. Um, let's see, the elbow bends in and out. And the hands turn a full 360. Waist articulation goes full 360, bends up and down slightly. Legs move out this far up, side to side slightly. Bend to the knee gap. Feet pivot up and down, and move side to side slightly. Uh, in truth, artic the articula articulation, I'm terribly sorry, um, it's not that great. Well, it could be slightly better, but this is the standard for all of Matty Collector stuff. Anyway, this is more for collectors more than, well, kids playing, I guess. It's the key word I could really say. In truth, this is a nice figure. He comes with three accessories. He comes with another head, um, one more considerably a He-Man, the He-Man face more than the Prince Adam face. Uh, yeah, the head's removable. Not gonna do that. Um, half a sword. And a full sword. The full, the sword is supposed to be, well, the sword of he that he, that Prince Adam has. And turns, of course, into He-Man's sword. You know, the ones that, I have the power! That stuff. I'm really, it's kind of weird that he comes with half the sword, too. But e either sword fits, the swords fit in e either hand. So yeah, I got two figures for what in one packaging. Well, that's it for my first Masters of the Universe figure. And will there be more? Probably yes. Anytime soon? Probably not. Well... I'm Gatboy Vaughn, and I'll see you guys later next time, really. And remember, he's got the power! See ya.